shine bright and do it right. That is what Russia's Paulina did today at Junior Eurovision 2017, winning a closely contested contest by just three points over Georgia. Should we talk about it? <laughs> Let's, Let's do, do this. this. That is right. This was a closely contested event. Let's look at the scoreboard. Russia with 188, just pipping Georgia on 185, Australia on 172, and then the Netherlands, Belarus, Armenia, Ukraine, Poland, and Malta, all scoring over 100, followed by Serbia, Italy, FYR Macedonia, Albania, Portugal, and then Ireland and Cyprus. Now, of course, Bernardo's from Portugal and Porg is from Ireland. But before we get to your countries, let's talk about Russia. Well, if we take into account the studio cuts, this, this was actually my favorite prior to the, to the contest. Uh, I'm happy they won. I think it's a, a huge return for Russia uh, to the Eurovision family since they, they weren't in, in Kiev. Uh, but taking into account all the performances of tonight's show, for me, it wasn't the best, but I understand why it won. It's a well-produced pop song, huge voice for just a 13 or 14-year-old girl. And I understand why the, the professional jury ranked this, uh, ranked this higher. I think it was one of the few entries that kind of ticked every box in that it had a good song, a good singer, a good stage show. Um, because there was a, a few songs that were quite strong in tonight's show, but they were their stage show was lacking. It was just them on stage or it didn't meld or whatever. The different elements just didn't work. Whereas Russia, they had the story that kind of continued on from the music video and the, the interpretive dance and the story of um, conflict within the family. And it all played out quite well on stage and it was coherent. And she was a very strong vocalist. And like, is she... She wasn't my personal winner, but she was in my top five. Yeah, this was a solid performance. It was kind of like performance art. The LED was very well thought out. It was very futuristic, very technically advanced. The bedroom looked quite real. Like, I knew it was a screen, but initially I was like, ooh, they done moved her bedroom onto the stage in Tbilisi. It was a very good effect. They had very polished dancers. I mean, this song is not a song I would download or listen to. I think it's very, very dramatic, and I think it's a very shouty song. However, it's done very well because she can sing. The stage show fit the song. So I understand why people got behind this. Um, again, it wasn't my personal winner. It, it, it's really curious because when we look at how the jury voted and how the children voted, there's a bit of a discrepancy. You know, in the televote, Russia came sixth, I believe, with 66 points. But the Netherlands won the televote with, you know, more than 112 or 112 points, which is nearly double, I think, what Polina had. So it's curious, you know, Malta came second with the televoters, but then with the jury, it was quite low, actually. It was um, yeah, yeah, 13th, yeah. fourth from the bottom. So, you know, is this a show for kids that should be judged by kids or this is, is this a show that should have an adult element? Clearly, the adults got behind Russia, putting her, you know, just behind Georgia in the jury vote. Um, what are your thoughts on this discrepancy between kids and adults? I think looking at the juries, there was kind of a bit of a Salvador Sobral effect, I think, and that kind of really helped Georgia because he was that kind of the classy old school, um, that ballad, that, he was the closest to Salvador and he kind of was, do you know, when people think of credible music, it's kind of that Georgia song, but I can't see anybody within the junior Eurovision age group of eight to 14 year olds really putting on the Georgian song. Um, because Russia, like, while it's quite adult in its teams and stuff, it's still the sort of song, like, little girls like their big Disney ballads, and so Russia falls into that, whereas there are not little girls and, well, there are obviously little girls and boys listening to jazz, but there's very few. Um, and then, see, the televote was so problematic because the online voting element, it was open to, it could be manipulated, you could mass vote, you could vote for your own country, then the voting system collapsed and then so much of the votes were based on the rehearsal footage rather than the live show. And yeah, no, it's, it's hard to pick any pattern or trends, I think. 
I, I will say this, in the Netherlands with Junior Song Festival, you know, they used to do like a reality show where the kids would live in a house and it was a very big deal and it still is. Like they put this on television, there's a lot of hype, their YouTube channel has 133,000 subscribers, the official music video had something like 1.2 million views. So people in Holland are passionate. And so when our poll predicted, our online vote poll predicted that the Netherlands had won the televote, people were like, what are you talking about? But then they did win the televote. And I think it's because force fangirls and fanboys really came out you can vote for your own country and that definitely helped them and I'm not saying anything bad about the Netherlands because it was very kid appropriate I quite enjoyed it that it was very you know this was great for a kids contest so it's a deserved placing you know well done them um, but that's something to consider that when you allow a country to vote for itself you know maybe this inspires broadcasters to pump more effort into their own entries at home like do more mm -hmm. domestic promotion rather than thinking outside it could help yeah and even with the like there was issues that obviously Australia couldn't vote for themselves because it was the middle of the night. Um, the Irish broadcaster TG Cahir, we're filming this right now at six o'clock and the show isn't due to be broadcast on Irish TV for another 30 minutes. So obviously Ireland can't vote for themselves. So like certain countries are at an immediate disadvantage. I think in general, the, the voting system they adopted this year felt completely because clearly the juries think that Junior Eurovision is one thing, and the viewers think Junior Eurovision is another thing, a completely different thing. And then there's this, like Porik said, there, is, there are even countries that didn't even broadcast the show yet. How is that supposed... If you have a say on the winner, why didn't you broadcast the show live? Yeah, it's very strange. And in many ways, the online voting is there to kind of make up for the fact that some broadcasters don't broadcast live because they're saying you can vote in advance, but... It's just a bit of a hot mess. I kind of miss the days when it was just the vote. Like, just the vote, get rid of the adults. I think junior Eurovision should be a junior contest judged by children. Um, and as we see here, it would have actually impacted the results quite significantly. But it doesn't matter. The rules are the rules, and Russia won fair and square with a dramatic performance. Let's quickly talk about the casualties. Um, let's start over in Ireland. This was one of my favorite. Like, every time it comes on in the recap, I'm like, whoa, she's so good. What a special song. It just didn't win over the jury or the televoters. Porig. I think there were a number of problems and none of them were Mwirin's fault. I think the biggest one probably was that it came on so early in the running order that it's probably the kind of song that needs to come on towards the end, that it's a quite simple song. And if we look back at Georgia last year, they did a very quite simple song and that was dead last in the running order and it won and it stuck in people's minds so I think if Mirren was close to the end people might have been more inclined to well the jurors might have been more inclined to vote for her um then also I think like her staging there's simple staging and then there's too simple staging and her staging was very very simple and the stage this year was quite big I think if we'd had it in the Maltese stage last year which was tiny it would have worked better then because it was a very intimate stage, but she kind of looked a bit lonely at, at moments and the camera angles didn't help. I noticed that in a good few acts that the production values were very high this year, but the cameras weren't always in the right place at the right time. And there was a lot of like rushing back and forth to try and get there. Um, and then she probably lost a few votes in that the crowd watching at home can't vote for her because they're not watching for another three hours. And Bernardo, we've got to talk yeah. about your return. Congratulations on Portugal's best ever result at Junior <laughs> Eurovision. This is the case. In the televote, Portugal came 10th out of 16, which is quite respectable. And in the jury vote, okay. next to last. So the juries gave Portugal nine points, too low. The televote gave Portugal 45 points, in my opinion, too low. Because, well, you're Portuguese. I wonder why you think it's too uh, No, but now in all seriousness, I think it's a fair result for, for, for the song. And I don't judge the juries for giving us such a low score, taking into account the qualities the song had. I kind of think it's a song, a children's song created by adults that they think children will like and that they didn't really get what was going on. And it was kind of like, okay, she's thinking about YouTube. That's on the internet. What else is on the internet? Emojis, let's fill the stage with emojis. Emojis have nothing to do with YouTube. And I think it was quite, see the problem as well with Eurovision is that it's such a wide spectrum that the difference between an 18 year old and a 14 year old in their tastes and what they like is huge. And YouTuber was very much 
at the lower age range that that would appeal to the lower people who are just starting school or whatever, whereas a 14 year old is not going to like that side of music. And then I think beyond that, then in maybe another 10 or 15 years, people are like, oh, that's cute. I'll vote for that. But um, the song itself wasn't strong enough. Like the singer gave it a very, um, she gave it her all and it was a, much better than in the national final but she could only do so much with the material she was given oh she was lovely i want her to come back next year i will write her song instagrammer it's gonna be an (laughs) rmb take on her jazz bossa nova youtuber final thoughts we can each say what we want um i'm gonna say belarus overall they came one two three four five not living up to the hype from before the contest again i think that this Many Eurovision fans got excited, junior Eurovision fans, because they know Loreen. And you know, and this was like a kid's version of Loreen in a sense. She did great. I thought the camera angles were quite good. Um, but maybe it was just a bit too familiar in the sense that it, it does it seem very Loreen in many ways. But she's a big talent. She'll, she'll go far. Hope to see her win Eurofest very soon. Um, Malta, my number one, ended up finishing ninth. You know, I guess the jury's... They don't love children. No, I don't know. Maybe it was too busy for them. It was great to see the televoters reward this with the second place. Um, and Cyprus coming last. I'm a, I'm a little surprised by that. Um, I thought it was one of their better entries, but it's always a struggle for that island, and I wish them the best. I hope they stay in the contest and come back next year in Slay. I think that overall it was probably a better show than last year because um, last, last year's was just chaotic afterwards. Definitely. Um, but I think they need to return to the to the drawing board that there's so many elements that just aren't working. The juries, the the online voting was a flop, basically. Um, but I think the online voting, even though it had its faults, it was more reflective of reality that the songs that did well in the online vote were the songs that children liked, that were popular with children, that you could imagine on the radio, whereas the juries we're going more after technique, I think. And I don't think that's what Junior Eurovision is about because it's Junior. We have the adult Eurovision for the more credible songs or whatever. Junior Eurovision is supposed to be fun and Junior. And if it keeps rewarding these big balladeers, it kind of loses its USP. Um, But yeah, yeah, I don't have much else to say, but just that things need to be looked at. I think at the end of the day, the EBU needs to needs to stop looking at Junior Eurovision as an experiment for the future, because uh, because it's slowly destroying their own brand. You know, uh, every year every year changing constantly the type of voting they're using, uh, the structure of the show. Uh, if the if if the arena is big, if the arena is small, if the stage is big, if the stage is small. You know, all this. Uh, all these little things at the end of the day destroy uh, destroy the brand uh, they they created, and I think they want to to keep the brand alive uh, because if they didn't, they they wouldn't have announced Belarus as the host so early, you know. Look, my suggestion: one hundred percent kids voting, kids hosts. That's what <laughs> Well, that's what we think. What do you think? Are you excited that Russia has won? What were your top three? What would you change for next year's competition? Let us know here on Booby Blogs. Make sure to subscribe. And if you have already subscribed, hit the bell button down underneath. And that gives you a notification every time we upload a new video. I didn't know that. Is that true? <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm not wow. lying. <laughs> like and comment. I'm going to go hit that bell and I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.